What is up enthusiasts, EDC Eater Flags here and welcome back to another one of my videos. So when I get off a roller coaster that has mixed reactions, I think to myself, was that an elite coaster or was that something that could be a little forgettable? And I have to say, they definitely differentiate from ride to ride. And it seems like, compared to the general consensus, I have pretty weird opinions. This is why I absolutely love talking about roller coasters and I love talking about these unpopular opinions. But today, I am going to get into a roller coaster review to talk about the tallest and the second fastest roller coaster on the planet, King to Ka at Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey. This ride has definitely gotten a lot of mixed reactions, but by the looks of it, it is an absolute menace. So do I think that this is an elite, world-class roller coaster? Or do I think it is a little subpar? Let's get right into it. This is Cedar Flags, and today, we will be reviewing the one and the only King of Coasters, King to Ka. So, what's very unique about this coaster's review that is different from other coaster reviews is that this is a much, much shorter roller coaster than some of the others. It has a presentation, but the ride's layout overall is pretty simple. You launch, you go up, you go down, and you have one final airtime hill before the ride ends out. But nonetheless, I still wanted to talk about it because there is so much to talk about. After all, like I said, when this ride opened up in 2005, it opened up as the tallest and fastest roller coaster on Earth, at a max height of 456 feet and a top speed of 128 miles an hour. And let me say, this ride looks incredible in person. And going up to the ride in the Golden Kingdom area, it truly is a beautiful spectacle to look at. This is easily, without question, the best themed Six Flags ride I've ever been to. The ride is surrounded by trees and bamboo, and has this very secluded look. So when you get to the actual entrance, you see that this is sort of an ancient African type of theme. As you are putting your items in the lockers, which is mandatory, you are greeted by some techno, electronic, safari music, which is a very weird mix, but it goes so well. In fact, this is one of my favorite ride soundtracks of all time, and I can listen to this on repeat. Every time I get in this ride's queue, it just hypes me up so much more. Leading up to the ride's plaza, you are completely surrounded by trees and bamboo and can't see five feet away from you in either direction. And the queue is no different. You feel like you are in the middle of the wilderness, and I think that gives this ride a whole new feel as opposed to some of the other rides at the park. Now, this is where in the ride I realized that it's not necessarily better or worse than Top Thrill Dragster the overall presentation, but it is very, very different. Top Thrill Dragster is out in the open right next to a midway, and it really is available from every angle of the eye. But with King to Ka, it is a lot more hidden, and I think that gives a whole new illusion to the theme of King to Ka. Anyways, when you see the launch track, they go absolutely flying, they go way over the top of the first hill, and go flying through the second hill and both look massive. Even the station is extremely mesmerizing. It has this cool temple feel, and man, I just love it so much. This, like I said, does not feel like Six Flags. Anyways, getting back to the station, the ride used to be a dual loading station, which meant that it could have two cars in it at the same time using two switch tracks, but with recent capacity changes, they have made it down to one. So even though it looks like a little bit of an eyesore when you look at it, it still is pretty efficient compared to some other rides. Anyways, you board onto your train, and you go pull down those hard over-the-shoulder restraints by Intamin. Anyways, that is when the ride starts. You move into the front, and you go on that switch track leading to the first launch. And man, you get a very similar feeling to how Top Thrill Dragster is when you are sitting there, especially in the front row, looking at the track ahead of you and the world's tallest hill on a roller coaster, it is definitely something to remember and your heart is definitely going to be pumping. There's a little bit of an element of surprise that many other launch coasters don't have. And what I mean by that is there's no indication on when the roller coaster will start launching. On a ride like Top Thrill Dragster, there's the engine noises and the Christmas tree lights. And on Storm Runner, there is the get ready, here we go. And even on a ride like Max Force, there are a few indicators like the rumble. But King to Ka has none of that. You wait a few seconds and instantly you are starting to be pulled at over 128 miles an hour. Unlike Top Thrill Dragster and Max Force, where it feels like you are being pushed at the speed of light, this ride feels like you are being pulled by a massive conveyor belt. And you feel that pull throughout the entire launch, and it feels so graceful but so forceful at the exact same time. Now is a part of the ride that definitely caught me off guard. It is the first part of the first hill, 
the climb. Now, I'm not 100% sure why, but the pull up on that first lift hill, pulling around 5 Gs, might be one of the most intense positive G elements I've experienced in my entire life. I felt like I was being crushed into a pancake. This element is probably the most underrated on the ride, and I don't think I've experienced anything similar to this in my life. It feels very similar to the first turn on I-305, if not, maybe even a little more forceful than that. You go all the way up to the top and get a great view of the surrounding areas, which are a little less developed than cities. There are a lot of trees nearby, a lot of forest, but you don't really enjoy that view for too long as you are sent straight down the same way. And you drop over 400 feet down, reaching another 120 mile an hour speed mark, going down a 270 degree spiral, and once again pulling some very extreme g-forces and then is an element that i have not experienced on one of these rides before a massive camelback hill this camelback hill is truly massive it is one of the biggest speed hills in the world without a doubt and with all that speed after the first top hat and the launch you're going to need a hill this size and let me say my friend said it the best this is probably one of the most underrated ride elements of all time you get some great floater airtime and it lasts several seconds. You are floating out of your seat for at least three, four, maybe even five seconds on a hot day. And the ride is complete with a counterclockwise turn in the once dueling station that you entered in earlier. You go out through the side and you are, let's just say, blown away. Very similar to Top Thrill Dragster, this ride absolutely took my breath away and it filled me up with so much adrenaline, I could not forget the ride once I got off. So, is this ride an elite coaster? We're gonna get to that next. So, for the final part of the video, we are going to talk about how elite of a ride this is. And what do I mean by elite? Well, I mean a ride that places high in my rankings, a ride that is unforgettable, a ride that stands out from the rest of my coaster count. And does this ride stand out? Yeah, it definitely stands out in so many different ways. This ride is one of the most unique coasters I have ever been on. But there is definitely a catch that I did not mention. Now, a lot of people have mentioned this in the past, and I completely agree. If you sit in the first three or four rows of this ride, you're going to have no problem. In fact, it's probably going to be just as good, if not even a little better, than Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point. And that is because it's a very smooth ride experience, and it is very forceful. With that being said, though, in the back rows of the ride, I found this ride extremely rough and jittery and those over-the-shoulder restraints that I once praised turned into an absolute nightmare. And so, that is why I would put a ride like the late Top Duel Dragster over King Ka, because it is a lot more consistent, and it is good in any row, while King Ka is only good in certain rows. But nonetheless, this is still an incredible coaster, has great theming, has a great setting. My real only complaint is the ride's layout. It is a very short ride, but nonetheless, it is still a great ride. Anyways, let me know what you thought in the video. This is Cedar Flags, and I'll see you all later.